You too, what is going on? So there Top 23. I'm back with another video. Before we get into the video, YouTube, I need you to hit a like, comment, and subscribe button. Turn on that post notification bell while you at it. Today we got the heartbreaking story of Chris Cross. Let's get straight into it. The youngest successful rappers in the history of music. How old are you, both of you? Both 13. Both 13. Yeah. 13. Surprised are you that here you are? I mean, in such a short time. I mean, the worst thing for me is I can't please all my girls, all the girls out there. I hope you out. In this video, we will talk about the crisscross duo who every kid was crazy for, the guys who set the trend to wear their pants backwards, which Eminem even referenced in the song My Name Is. Got pissed off and ripped Pamela the leaves tits off and smacked her so hard I knocked her close back with like crisscross. Both of their names were Chris, so naturally, the Chris portion of their name made a lot of sense. But where did the cross come from? According to Chris Smith's mother, it was from a name that Kelly himself earned when he was a few years younger. Per a 1992 Washington Post profile, Smith's parents recalled that Kelly loved applesauce so much that a teacher affectionately called him Chrissy Crossy Applesaucy. How did they choose their names? Kelly chose Mac Daddy, and Smith was Daddy Mac. It essentially originates from Mac, a term that signified a man that gets a lot of women. Jermaine Dupri, one of the most influential producers, met the two boys at the Greenbrier Mall in Atlanta. He was looking at how random people reacted to the boys. The girls behind the counters were behaving as if they saw them on TV. They were going crazy screaming. He saw two obviously cool boys getting free cookies from the girls who worked there. A curious Dupree approached them, found out that they were only 11 years old, and asked what they were doing to attract such attention from girls in the mall. As Dupree recalled, Daddy Max said, we're just cool. Chris Cross represented something Jermaine Dupree had never seen before. Mm -hmm. You gotta understand people out there, Chris Cross weren't rappers. They weren't kids walking around with demos. They weren't trying to be rappers. They weren't trying to be singers. When I met them, I said, what do y'all do? Dupree explains, we just cool. I was like, damn, get these guys a record fast. Which means Criss Cross were an ear to make music and didn't even consider it possible. But everything changed Are after they made it? the track jump. Are you American? Is your roof in need of an upgrade? The nationwide roof repair and replacement website makes it possible for all U.S. homeowners to easily get a new... The song stayed number one on the Billboard chart for eight weeks, and in addition, it was the third best-selling song of 1992 in the United States, oh, with sales of 2,079,000 physical copies in the same year. Next, they released their debut album called Totally Crossed Out, which sold 4 million copies in the U.S. alone. Have you any idea of just how successful you are? Well, I mean, we, we really we try not to think about that kind of stuff. The duo introduced the trend of wearing pants backwards. They were fanatics of wearing clothes backwards, from t-shirts to jeans and caps. The debut album cover shows the pair with both their jeans and New York sports jerseys on backwards. Their video would also be a poignant example as to why many other people in the 90s began sporting their clothes backwards. They were such a force in the trend that they are almost always cited as the creators of it. How does that work when, like, you gotta pee? How do you, how do you do that? We just unbuckle our belts, cause our pants are big and drops waist. down. Yeah, yeah. And it works. Okay, you don't have your shoes on backwards, by the way. Nah. That's it. Um, one thing, you're still at school or not? We have tutors on a roll with us. DJ Smurf, for example, saw a bunch of guys at his college who wore their clothes like that, and it was the undeniable influence from the song Jump, even though many of the Atlanta scene weren't fans of their music, but the guys didn't care. After all, they met Michael Jackson in 1992, and even went on tour with him. When they toured with Michael Jackson, they didn't feel like they were at the same level, even though they were already making millions in sales. They did not realize the full extent and scope of their success. But for them, first of all, it was fun, so there was not much stress. <laughs> I 
we was out there, we just kicked it, you know, had a little fun, played a little basketball. Yeah. Really, that was it. Yeah. But, you know, it was pretty cool. You know, we just talked about a lot of different things. Sure. Pertaining the music business and stuff like that. The guys were covered in fame and glory and won awards one after the other. First of all, we want to thank God for making all this happen. We just going to try to make the album better than the first one. Yeah. Exactly. In 1993, they released an album called The Bomb, which was successful, but despite trying to make the second album better, it was not as successful as the first release. I know you hear me coming, so you best to watch your back. And I go look through my hood, and I see the one that used to do the dirt that turned good. Little kids trying to be like... And in 1996, they put out their third album. Despite some positive reviews, Young, Rich, and Dangerous was Criss Cross's least successful album. The group separated sometime after their third album and went on to solo careers. Many people believe this is due to the fact that the guys have grown up and their voice became more mature and the vibe was just not the same. And so Kelly and Smith began writing and producing albums. Well, you must be tricking and that's crazy. You better get it right. Tell them what they did just to get it right. In 2007, the group reunited and were working on different projects, still working for Jermaine Dupri. She inspired the heart song, a lady. She displays people through and through, a lady. In 2009, photos appear that show Chris Kelly with several bald spots. To dispel rumors that he had cancer, Kelly announced that he was suffering from alopecia. In the meantime, Mr. Kelly studied audio engineering, ran a small record label, and owned a daycare business with his mother. During the lean years, Mr. Kelly could get frustrated, said DJ Nabs, the group's DJ and a longtime friend of Mr. Kelly's. People looked like they turned their back on him. Chris Kelly had his own label called Seco Records. Chris Cross reunited for SoSo Dev's 20th anniversary concert in early 2013. Getting the death of Chris Kelly. He's best known as half of the 90s group Chris Cross. On May 1st, 2013, Chris Kelly died of a drug overdose that included heroin and cocaine at the age of 34. Damn. I had told you, though, you know how I thought. Man, I don't want to hear that, man. You know I don't want to hear that, bro. I know, man. I, I remember when this shit happened to back Kelly. then. I was like, I think eighth grade, bro. I ain't no who they was for him, so I looked them up. I'm like, damn, these niggas had their clothes on backwards and all this and that. But RP to that, man, bro. They really, like, started me with all that vintage shit. Like, if you don't know, I fuck with all the vintage shit, this and that, but seeing them with the big-ass jerseys and all the clean-ass sports shit they had, I'm like, bro, this shit clean as hell, bro. But RP to him, bro. I'd ended Atlanta Hospital after he was found unresponsive at his home, police said. The Fulton County Medical Examiner concluded that Kelly's death was an accident caused by the combined toxic effects of heroin, cocaine, ethanol, Xanax, Dude, and Vicodin. <laughs> After paramedics took him to the hospital, a woman who identified herself as Kelly's friend told an investigator that Kelly had taken a mixture of heroin and cocaine the night before, and that she had brought Kelly home to recover from his drug use, according to a police report. Chris Smith told how he felt when he found out about the death of his close friend. You just kind of freeze. For me to just look back and think about it, I just froze. I probably froze and the whole world just kind of went silent. I really don't remember anything too much from that moment that I first got the news. I don't remember a whole lot after that, because your mind just goes. I just locked myself away and I didn't want to be around anybody. I tried to absorb it the best I could. I never lost anybody that close to me in my life. Somebody that every day of your life, we were brothers. I could say crisscross forever, but I know without Chris, my life. Sad, bro. It ain't gonna never be the same. But I just hope our legacy for hip hop is never forgotten. But I'm gonna do my part, though.
to make sure Chris and Emily live on. Christopher Smith started to focus on other endeavors. He does not disclose information about his personal life. If he has a family with kids, he never mentions them in interviews or in articles featured about him. He also continues some aspects of his music career going. I recommend you check out the next video about how 50 Cent trolled his opponents. Thank you all for watching. Subscribe to the channel, and Damn, I'll see you soon. Chris Cross will definitely live on. They started that shit, bro. When they close back with his them, nobody ever did that shit before them, bro. Leave it like that. But YouTube, if you're rocking with the channel, leave me a like, comment, and subscribe. Give me to a thousand subs. Catch me on next one.